and that is the vice president of the United States, the official Democratic nominee for the presidency of the United States of America. Her name is Kamala Harris. Before I get into any of that, however, I have to correct a lie that has been told. Now, you've got some conservatives out there, and I'm not here to speak against conservatives. I'm a registered independent. There are things that I side with when it comes to the liberals. There are things that I side with when it comes to conservatives. I'm not apologizing for that to anybody. My buddy, one of my buddies is Sean Hannity. I ain't apologizing for that. I know and respect Mark Levin for years. I ain't apologizing for that to a damn soul. But I also don't agree with a lot of their politics, although I concede that there are some things they say that I think make very, very valid points, okay? But there are other conservatives out there who are full of it, who sit up there and try to misrepresent my positions because, oh my goodness, they think that I'm a voice and as a, as a result of being a voice, you get to misrepresent me. Now, I want y'all to see and put up there on the full screen who these people are that put out this tweet here, okay? Because I want people to see that, okay? This is from, I don't know who the hell these people are, or whatever, but it's at Defiantly Free, Insurrection Barbie is what they call it. And I had no problem with the clip of mine that they posted because they took a post from this show, the Stephen A. Smith show, and they showed it all 11 minutes or so of it, okay? And every word that was in there, I said, and I'm not backing up from it. But what I didn't say was what their caption showed. And that caption showed Stephen A. Smith, Kamala Harris, Kamala, is not qualified to run. I never said that. Those words didn't come out of my mouth. They're full of it. Now, I understand captions are used as a tool to draw in an audience. I get that part. But damn, do you have to lie? Do you have to fabricate? You didn't even embellish. I didn't say that. I wouldn't speak about the the vice president of the United States in that fashion. You've got people out there that have been calling Trump racist and all that. I don't talk about the former president like that. I talk about how he acts. I talk about the things that he says. I allude to him not being good for this country because I don't think he has the discipline or the maturity to do what needs to be done. I say stuff like that, but I don't call him out his name. And I certainly don't misrepresent what he says and what he does. I don't do that. And I wouldn't do that to the vice president of the United States, who, by the way, is a sister. A fellow HBCU grad. And somebody I have every intention of voting for. The nerve of y'all to lie on me like that. I'm talking about. Who is this here? Insurrection Barbie. That's what I'm talking about. That's a damn lie. Now, if you watch the clip for 11 minutes, you'll see me pointing to Kamala Harris and saying, yo, you got to show up. You you know, you know, but, you know, uh, uh, rallies. That's not a press conference where you're taking questions. That's not a one on one sit down interview where you're taking questions. That's not like sitting down with Meet the Press or This Week or Face the Nation or State of the Union, or one of these shows on Fox News, MSNBC, or CNN, or ABC, NBC, CBS. A rally is not that. At some point in time, although the strategy has worked thus far, what I was imploring our vice president to do, leading in to her speech last night in Chicago at the Democratic National Convention, officially accepting the nomination of the people to be the next president of the United States from the Democratic Party. What I said is, this honeymoon has got to come to an end. At some point in time, you got to stand up and you got to let the world know you ain't playing around. This is this man you going up against. You going up against a man convicted on 34 felony counts. You going up against a man who lost a civil suit for over $454 million. You're going up against a man that's been impeached twice. You're going up against a man with a bevy of legal issues, and you got to stand up and you can't be running. I don't give a damn what wave you riding. And I also pointed out the process 
that she didn't have to go through. Because with President Biden in office and him being the incumbent and the gre- and the wheels clearly haven't been greased for him to walk into Chicago as the Democratic nominee without any competition because there was no primary, knowing that that was the backdrop before he revealed himself on June 27th to having lost a significant pep in his step as a result, forcing Democratic donors and supporters to threaten to jump ship unless he stepped away from the race to somebody younger, more vibrant, more more lucid, dare I say, et cetera, et cetera, can jump into the fray. I said, knowing that that was your backdrop and knowing that you didn't have a primary to deal with and knowing that you didn't have any any competition standing in your face and the path had been cleared for you to compete with one man and one man only, and that was Donald Trump. I said, you can't be, you can't be ducking that smoke. You got to go for it, and you should be able to handle it. I said it, and I meant it, and nobody was stuttering. And so with that as the backdrop, understanding that, that's all I was saying. Nobody said that she was unqualified. Like they're trying to quote me as saying, I'm making sure that Stephen A. Smith, Kamala is not qualified to run. I never, ever said that. Ever. And to use my name to put forth that drivel, that flat out lie is BS. See, this is the kind of stuff that hurts politi- politicians and their supporters and surrogates. If you got the truth and your message is strong enough, what the hell you got to lie for? That's what they try to do. And I'm saying that ain't right.